Hi, everybody. My name is Mr. Santoyo, and I teach eighth grade English language arts at Gaston Middle School in Dallas ISD. I am doing very well, and I hope you are as well. My students are doing fine, and we are really trying to rally behind each other and stay connected online. So that's definitely presented its challenges, but I'm super glad that we have very active Google Classroom that we can interact with each other day to day. So at Gaston, we allow for our students to choose which assignments best suit them. So my principal has really given me a lot of flexibility in what I assign my students, how often I communicate with them, and in which ways we actually get the work done. So I, I am a unique kind of case. My students and I will communicate in a variety of ways. With over 70 students that I teach, I definitely have tried every single possible way to get into contact with them. So I have a very active private Instagram account page for just my students and myself. And I can actually show you that on my screen in addition to a lot of different things. Our class Instagram has been something that has been really unique and has allowed for me to interact with the students on a more immediate level. The students uh, have Instagram accounts that they use to keep in touch with the Dallas Independent School District. So whenever we give information about meal distributions or about any sort of technology distributions, this is how they keep in touch with our district at wide. But with me personally, they can keep in touch this way. So this is a private account where I allow students to see different things that I post. I keep up to date with them with any of the latest news. They love memes because they're 13 and 14 years old. So this is a way for them to really kind of stick to what they're used to. And since I know how to use Instagram very well, this has been so effective with getting them to participate, getting them to really engage in the work that we do. So it's something that is only designed for my students. I don't follow them back because I still want to create those professional boundaries, but I do follow back other teachers at my school and other individuals who have kind of a stake in our education because they really are doing as much as they can as well to interact with the kids. So it's great because it allows for me to really see how they're doing in ways that Google Classroom can't but I get to talk about all sorts of different things that I'm planning for my class. So we Zoom call or Google Meets every Monday through Thursday um, from 11 to 12. Fridays are like a fun flex day. And this Thursday actually is one as well. So we get to talk about overcoming obstacles and just different topics that they want to hear about. So a lot of them are going to high school next year. They want to know what it's like to play high school sports or to be in the band or to get involved. And this is a way for me to kind of produce that message. I studied communication in college. So I'm really taking advantage of all the lessons I learned in digital media and marketing and advertising. So it's been a, a ride, but I think Instagram has been a really cool tool for us to really move the needle with, with learning in a time where it's very unpredictable. So that's that Instagram account. And I think it's been one of my favorite parts of this whole um, shelter in place ordinance that has prevented us from being in the classroom. Still can see how they're doing um, and they can still check in with me as well. So with Google Classroom, it's really cool because we can communicate on a platform called Google Meets, which is similar to Zoom, but it embeds within the Google Classroom page that all of our students see. In Dallas ISD, all of my students had a Google Chromebook, so they're used to using this in addition to the other resources that we've been given throughout the school year. Google Classroom is really neat because with my third period here, for example, I can communicate through this header photo when I'm available to them. I make myself available every day of the week from two to four for virtual office hours. I also make sure to grade their work at the end of the week by Friday. So if students need extra time, they have that time. We have a class remind as well as that Instagram that I talked about, but our theme at our school is grit. And I think now more than ever, we're really showing our students what that means and how we can actually have that. So I love this little message here that I have for all of my students to see every time they join the class, you have grit. Thank you for working today. So the Google Classroom page allows for me to make posts. It also allows for me to share videos and other files. For my students, I'm having them complete five assignments for these last five weeks of school. And I'm really glad that I have an experience in design. I used to edit 
my high school newspaper. So I've always loved the way that things look and how you can visually communicate messages with students. I also have uh, some experience in iMovie. So I have created a YouTube channel and video for my students to take a look at for those that need that additional help uh, getting the instructions read to them rather than having me just write it. So I won't play the entire video, but pretty much I give them a chance to understand what class is like through this new interactive way. They can watch this whenever they need to on the weekend or during the school day. So one thing I really try to tell my students to do is to not quit. Uh, motivation is low for some students and I wanna encourage them that I'm here for them at any time that they need me. And I think that's really important to have those consistent adult figures who are positive role models still be there for the kids. So online school technically ends on May 28th. I expect them to stay with me. So giving these little bursts of positivity really help, but Google Classroom is the best thing. I also have gone kind of above and beyond most teachers and giving them tons of work to choose from. I don't expect them to read all of these different things, but in English language arts, it's very important to actively read. So whenever we read, we make sure that we annotate and make comments and thoughts about the things that we are taking a look at. So here I've used the topics section of Google Classroom and the classwork tab to basically create different sections for my students to choose from. So some students are athletes and they love reading about sports, whereas other students could care less about sports and want to learn more about fine arts or maybe even music. So I've definitely thought deeply about what my students are interested in, and I've curated through a website called News ELA over 25 different articles that they can choose to read, annotate, and answer some questions about that test their comprehension skills. So everything here is an option for them. We have everything from LGBT voices to Hispanic stories like about Hispanic heritage. Even we have uh, stuff about video games. So I wanna keep the kids engaged and I wanna keep them reading. And this allows for them to choose which really speaks to them. And I think now in this time, if they're reading at all, it's a positive thing. So students can basically click on any of these uh, articles. They can open it with an app that we have access to called Kami, which allows for them to annotate on the paper or, or whereas they would annotate on paper, Kami allows for them to annotate on their Chromebooks rather, and it instantly submits and sends to me as their teacher. So it's really cool because I can see here that I've got one already turned in from a student and that student, let's see, that student is Lakivia, and I can click on Lakivia's paper and I can see how she did, how she annotated. I can comment back to her and still have that dialogue as if we were in class and see how it basically was for her. So here she's highlighted, it's gonna take a little bit of time to load, but she highlighted her key um, ideas, her main ideas and different things that spoke to her. And after she did that, hopefully she answered, yep, she circled some questions and I'll be grading that later. So this is how it looks in Google Classroom, but this is something I can open up with the Cami service. And it's a really, really cool tool. So these are just the little ways that we're still staying in touch with our students. Cami is definitely my favorite option, but more than ever, it's important for the students to feel supported and to feel as if someone is actually concerned about their education. And I'm so glad I get to do that through an app like Cami. So luckily Cami is free. Uh, typically it's about $100 a year for teachers to use but it's free because of the coronavirus. But when this trial ends in 68 days, it'll be something that teachers can pay for if they would like. But this is all something that I think is an additional tool for students. I also have students write in journal. So if they don't like reading comprehension questions at all, they can choose to journal, which I've had one student already choose. Ms. Poindexter, she chose to journal about one of the 20 topics that I gave her to choose from. So these topics just try to get your mind thinking and I ask them to journal about any of these topics here and they can submit in another attachment, which I'm just so proud of how savvy they, savvy they are about attaching these things like emails. Um, she can basically write to me and just express her thoughts that way. So I'm really pumped to see how well the students are, are giving the effort to things like this. It's not easy by any means. Um, and I'm, I'm an extreme optimist. So 
there's even days where I feel down. But I believe that whenever we give the students an, opportun an opportunity to actually thrive, they will. And they just need to know that their teachers are there and unafraid of what's to come. So my kids are excited for high school. They're very, very sad, though, that they have missed out on opportunities to have an eighth grade prom, to have uh, our school does a, an eighth grade signing day for all of our future high school football players where they commit to our feeder high school. So those athletes won't get to experience that. And in addition to that, they're not going to have the eighth grade graduation or award ceremony. So as the student council sponsor at my school, I'm really thinking of ways that I can continue to make these traditions at our school virtual, but I'm having issues with um, just how we can still make these exciting moments come to life through a uh, virtual camera. So it's difficult and challenging at times, but I think we just have to do what we can to um, keep our confidence and keep our excitement on what's to come and just never forget that these kids are experiencing things that are sometimes very unimaginable and very stressful. And we're asking them to do things that some adults don't really develop those skills until college. Um, being able to self-regulate, self-discipline your time and to, to, really, to really see them rise into the occasion um, is just really reinforcing why I'm a teacher. So thank you for taking the time to take a look at this video. It's a little peek into my life. It's a it's been a whirlwind, but I think we're, we're going to get through it. So uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you've ever would like to connect with me or my students, I'd be happy to accommodate. Thanks.